let's say that you have clients in different currencies, different countries. Should you charge them the same number? So let's say you charge $150 an hour uh, in your currency. Uh, let's say you're, uh, well, just for this, for ease, let's just say that you charge in US dollars. So if you charge $150, $150 per session in US dollars, and then now you have someone in the United Kingdom, should you also charge them 150 pounds, you know, Brit British pounds? And let's say you have somebody in Singapore, so you charge them 150 Singapore dollars or whatever the Singapore currency is called. If you have someone in Australia, should you charge them 150 Australian dollars? Um, I recommend that because pricing essentially should be based on your business model, your financial goals, needs and goals. Um, because you're planning on, let's say you can, you, you have the time to see uh, 10 sessions, you have time for 10 sessions, one-on-one -on -one sessions per week. Well, then you, you're counting on 10 one-on-one -on -one sessions per, let's, and the, let's say that you need 10, if you had 10 sessions per week and you need to make, I don't know, let's say uh, $1,500 per week, let's say that that was your goal, 10 sessions $150 per session is $1,500 per week. And let's say you've already planned on that in US dollars. Okay, you, you plan on how, that means if somebody is in a different country, they should be paying you whatever works for your business model. <laughs> There's no magical number of 150 that works for every currency. So, I mean, for example, I mean, let's use an extreme example, Japanese yen. Okay, <laughs> if it was 150 Japanese yen, I don't know what that's like very, or pesos, right? 150 pesos is, is not, nowhere near 150 US dollars, right? And uh, I'm sure there's other currencies where 150 is much more than 150 US dollars. So that's why you should pick the currency that you're doing your business planning in whatever your business goals, it makes sense, mm, 10 sessions, or if you average five sessions per week and you're planning a business around that, then whatever money you expect out of five sessions per week to pay your rent and to, you know, to, to save money or whatever your financial goals are, pick that number for your currency. And then just every other client in any currency is paying you in their currency, but matched to your currency. So at this time, and I'll just share my screen briefly to, 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 to show everyone. So let's say that I'm charging 150 USD, okay, okay, to uh, British pounds, okay. So if I had a client in, in, if I charge 150 US dollars, then basically my, my, my British client is paying 110.40 pounds sterling at this time. Now, gratefully, uh, if you use PayPal, it does the trans, it does the conversion automatically. You know, they, they click on your PayPal button to pay you 150 US dollars. It converts for them to pay 110 pounds sterling plus whatever fee uh, either they pay or you pay. I think it depends on how you set up the PayPal button. I think typically you, 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 you know, you pay the conversion fee. Another tool that's very popular is called wise.com. Wise.com has uh, slightly lower fees than PayPal, or depending on the currency transfer, it might be it might be enough for you to, to switch to Wise.com instead of PayPal. Or Stripe also, if you do a Stripe payment link, they also do the transfers automatically. So, uh, you know, using that same example we're talking about, let's say Singapore dollars, right? So let's say hundred. So what is Singapore dollars then? Singapore dollar. So yes, if I charge 150 US dollars, then my Singapore client is paying 203.83. And uh, so that's, so on your website, you simply list it as my rate is 150 US dollars. And you can um, basically, uh, you know, give them, uh, you say, well, how should you, should you give them the, what the price is in various? No, I mean, you can basically, guide them to say, go to Google and search 150 USD to your currency and it'll automatically pop up with what your currency is. 
And I'm, I'm sure there's some widget out there that you could embed onto your site to show them the current currency. There's probably a, some widget, if any of you watching this know, comment below. Um, but otherwise, just if you wanna keep it real simple, it's okay just to state it in US dollars. So I hope that helps. And I want to just bring forward um, Gregory, who is live with me here, chat, chatted below. 150 Mexican pesos is $7.30 US. So yes, that would be too good of a deal <laughs> for, for people in Mexico. And, and actually a related question to this is, well, should I have compassion for my clients in Mexico and says, you know, they made, you know, 150 US dollars is 3,000 Mexican pesos. Is that a lot of money for them? I understand that you are a compassionate person and I try to be a compassionate person too. But when it comes to your financial sustainability, uh, you need to think about yourself first. When it comes to your business model, you must prioritize your financial sustainability first because you care about your business's sustainability first. And then you can have compassion after that. So uh, if, if, a, if a Mexican client wants to work with you and you are $150 US dollars, it is too complicated to start saying, well, for Mexicans, maybe I'll charge 100 US dollars for Mexicans because, you know, their economy. And for, for, for people in Britain, uh, they have, you know, their currency transfers better uh, or their currency rate is better than the US. I'm going to charge them equivalent to 170 US dollars. Then you start to get into complication with your, I'm assuming you're a self-employed solopreneur like I am, too complicated, in my opinion. And you're, you're letting your compassion, uh, in my opinion, you're misapplying compassion. You're misapplying compassion. The way to apply compassion in an authentic business is to say, oh, Mexican clients, you can't afford my 150 US dollars. By the way, my current hourly rate, I don't even do, I don't even see clients one-on-one -on -one anymore. So my, I don't even have an hourly rate anymore. Uh, you can't afford me hourly, <laughs> no matter if you're in the US or elsewhere. Anyway, I'm just saying, if somebody has 150 US dollars, the way to have compassion towards Mexican clients is to have multiple tiers to say, to say, you know what, Mex Mexican clients, you can't, you can't afford my one-on-one -on -one rate. Don't worry, I have a group program. And my group program is only, $75 US per month. And you can definitely work with me at that rate because you can come to my group calls and we'll have time for Q&A, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how we have compassion in a way that's still personally sustainable to us. We can't just bend over backwards, literally, and break our backs, right? So bend over backwards means you bend over backwards to try to serve everybody in the world who has different currencies and you break your back and you go out of business. And now you're not serving anybody. Now you're not serving anybody, right? simplify, prioritize your business model, and then just every let PayPal figure out the, the, the translation and have multiple tiers of offerings. You, have, you should have one-on-one, -on -one, you should have a group program for people who can't pay as much, and you should have an online course for people who can pay even less than the group program. I hope this helps.